Hey, this is Ron Coddington from Military Images. Headquarters of Military Images Magazine. This is of uh, the first season of Research Rabbit Hole. And I am delighted that we're here this evening. Let a minute or so go by for everyone to come on. If you're watching us live, if you are watching this on YouTube or watching this on Facebook later on uh, after the episode has gone live, I want to welcome you too. Um, if you're coming to us on YouTube, please give us a like and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you were watching us on Facebook, please follow Military Images and uh, think about the subscription to our magazine, which is also called Military Images. We've been around since 1979, and uh, we've been covering the world of Civil War photo collecting for that entire time. So go to militaryimagesmagazine.com and check us out. So now I'm going to start with tonight's presentation. Let me share my screen and we will be present. And here we go. This episode is called, as you can see, This Uniform Tells a Story. And I want to begin by showing you this photograph. And I also have to begin with an admission. I am a condition freak when it comes to collecting photography. I readily admit that. And when I saw this visit come up recently at auction, I knew that I had to do my best to get it. And I was fortunate to be the winning bidder. The image itself is almost flawless. And when I first glimpsed it on eBay, I didn't really absorb all of the details. But after I received it and began to examine all the nuances, I realized that there's, a, there's quite an interesting story about the gentleman who is unidentified. And I'll tell you up front, I still don't know who he is, but the uniform that he wears gives us some clues and led me down a couple of research paths to get some sense of how he may have come to join the army. The thing that really caught my attention is the magazine the initials I thought initials but I didn't see it at first but Buck instantly recognized NG and sure enough if you do a bit of searching online you will find in fact I found this one on eBay uh, in the already sold section, the NG, which is the National Guard cartridge belt plate uh, that was part of that leather sling that held a soldier's cartridge box, unique to the New York National Guard. <coughs> Excuse me. In this particular example, you'll notice that the NG cartridge box plate is above another cartridge box plate. And you can see the circular shape right there. In the middle of that circular shape is an eagle, which is the classic federal eagle, uh, suggesting that this was a standard issue cartridge box. And in fact, here's an image of one of those cartridge boxes with the sling, and you can see the brass plate, the round brass plate with the Federal Eagle stamped on it. Very, very similar, I dare say exact to the one worn by this soldier. But what's interesting is this particular soldier has two cartridge plates, cartridge belt plates, 
And that is a bit unusual. Why would he have two? Only one was needed, but here he has two. One of them appears to be functional. One perhaps only for decoration. Hard to tell from this view. While I have his view on the screen, take a look at the handkerchief that's protruding from his pockets. Not uncommon, many soldiers carried it, but at first I thought that it was tucked into the piece of leather uh, that's uh, behind it, when in fact the handkerchief is protruding out of a pocket and you can see the slit of that pocket. So you've got the cartridge belt, you have another uh, leather belt, and then you have that handkerchief coming out of the top. If we move down a little bit in the area towards the waist of the soldier, you're going to see his belt and you're going to see an oval plate. And it's pretty clear in the view that we have here, it's slightly out of focus, perhaps because the soldier was breathing or moving ever so slightly, but you can see the initials S and Y. For those of you who are collectors of military images from the Civil War period, um, or collectors of buckles, you instantly know that the SNY is the state of New York. So now we have the connection of the buckle telling us state of New York, and then we have that cartridge belt plate with the NG for National Guard. So two connections, state of New York belt buckle and the National Guard cartridge belt plate. What else do we have here? He is holding a musket. And this musket is a model 1842, US made. And you can see here that he's holding the musket and also attached to his waist belt, you can see the leather holder for the bayonet. And in fact, there is the bayonet inside the leather holder. And it makes sense that the bayonet, it's easy to conclude that the bayonet belongs to the musket. There's no bayonet on the end of the barrel of the musket, and here it is inside the holster. So it's fair and safe to assume that the musket that he is holding here is one that he was um, issued, not necessarily one that was loaned to him or one that he had by a, a, perhaps the photographer um, or a buddy had one. No, we believe, I believe that this was standard issue. Now, if we take the, a, a pan out just a little bit and take a bit of a larger view, you're gonna see all the, these other straps going on. And of course, that's because he's wearing a knapsack and you can see his bedroll uh, up towards the top behind his neck. And you can see the straps coming over his shoulder. There's some brass buttons that connect the two other straps that make an X that cross over. Now, this particular knapsack and credit here to Mike Cunningham. I reached out to Mike Cunningham and Dan Binder because I know that they have an extreme interest in material culture and are two go-to folks when I'm looking for information about things that I can't figure out or uh, equipment that I'm curious to know more. There are others in my network. In this particular case, because it was a knapsack, I thought that Mike in particular would be a good person to go to. And sure enough, Mike was able to supply me with a photograph of the uh, model 1857 pack, which you can see here with its leather straps, the whole ensemble, if you will. Here's a bit more of a close up on that. You can see the leather straps. Uh, you can see two vertical straps that have hooks on the end. And you can also see the diagonal straps that he was able to use, any soldier could use. Now, those, this belt uh, was able to attach to another belt. This is the pattern 1855 belt. And you can see there's a couple of arrows here showing where the hooks would attach to some clips, some brass clips on the belt. Now, 
keep this belt in mind for just a moment, because when we go back to the photograph, we're going to find that the belt that this soldier is wearing is not the same belt. And in fact, it appears that he's done a little bit of customizing here to attach those leather straps to the belt itself with some appear to be brass rivets because there's no clips. Those brass clips that I showed you a moment ago are not present on the belt. So we'll come back out a little bit and take a view. And then you can see here again, uh, what he has done, and I've highlighted this in red, is he's taken those side leather uh, strips kind of a unique circumstance. I've also highlighted them to show how he might normally have worn them if the clips were present. So in this particular case, the fact that he has them crossed is helpful because it allows his two cartridge belt plates to show through. So he has a little bit of a personality, a little bit of a style. The photograph tells us one additional bit of evidence that might connect him to a regiment, and that is the brass on his cap. For those of you who are new to collecting, when I say brass, I mean the letters, the regimental company letter, and the regimental numbers that he uh, so focus, but it appears pretty darn clear that we're looking at the number 81 and the company F. So we can we can pretty much uh, take a, a good guess here that the cap he's wearing tells us that he served in Company F of the 81st New York. And my first thought that he was in the 84th, 81st New York National Guard. Now, these units could also be known as the militia infantry. So Company F, 81st New York National Guard, was my hypothesis at this point. I went into the State of New York archives and began poking around. And lo and behold, I was not able to find an 81st National Guard. I was able to find the 81st New York Infantry, which was an official regiment that was raised of volunteer recruits during the war, but no National Guard with the number 81. Now, this got me scratching my head and a theory developed. And my theory goes like this. Well, perhaps there was some connection to the National Guard in to the 81st Infantry. Fortunately, the 81st New York Infantry has its own regimental history. Here's a pretty decent, uh, decent condition copy of this regimental history. And the name of it is unique, Random Sketches and Wandering Thoughts, What I Saw in Camp on the March to Bivouac, the Battlefield and Hospital, while with the Army in Virginia, North and South, during the North and South Carolina during the late rebellion, with a historical sketch of the 2nd Oswego Regiment, which is the 81st in New York State Volunteer Infantry. Now, if you begin poking around in this book, you'll eventually get to the section that the author describes as a historical sketch. And I'm gonna read you just the, the first little bit of it to give you a flavor and give you the context because it's always interesting to me to know how regiments formed in the states during the wartime. And this one is, uh, is pretty good. Um, the beginning says, the rebellion after the Battle of Bull Run assumed a most formidable shape. The recent success had given the rebels courage and confidence and that which had been at first blustering on their part toward our government at Washington became real. The standard of treason was now lifted in every slave state of our union with many sympathizers at the North, as well as Europe, when 
many, when they received every encouragement which monarchical governments dared afford to belligerents. The great magnitude it was assuming had not been anticipated by many of our best statesmen and our government was but poorly prepared to combat it. Now, that's a very nice 19th century way of saying that the Union was unprepared for war. There were many Southern sympathizers throughout the North and Europe, and the United States government underestimated this domestic threat and this international threat. And they needed to mobilize to be able to combat that threat. So as you begin to work through the opening pages of the story, you learn that uh, there was a response by the citizens of Oswego, New York, and they went about applying, a group of citizens applying to the governor of the state to raise a regiment. Now, this was happening throughout all of the Northern states. So I wouldn't particularly say that it was unique to the citizens of Oswego, but it is true that like many of their fellow citizens across the country, they stood up when they needed to be counted and they formed the second Oswego Regiment. Now hold on because I'm getting to the National Guard connection. Remember our soldier, as we go back The citizens who formed the regiment, they invited a major of the 9th Brigade of the New York. Uh, simple. They are going to the local now and try to recruit from that National Guard unit. And the National Guard unit was the 48th Regiment National Guard State Militia. So the 48th, the, the plan was simple. They were going to recruit companies. I believe the number is seven, seven companies of men uh, and get 30 in each company list. Men to populate the new regiment was going to become the 81st. So negotiations happened. The, National Guardsmen in the 48th were approached. The plan was laid out. They discussed all the advantages of it. The officers and men of the 48th uh, National Guard deliberated. And in this moment of need, this moment of the government in crisis, this moment of civil war, and we're looking at the fall of 1861 after uh, uh, clear that the war was going to be of a longer duration. The service of these men from the 40th would have been extremely helpful to the citizens of Oswego. Now, you may wonder, what did the officers and men of the 48th decide to do? Did they decide to enlist en masse? Did they decide to get in there and help recruit other men? Well, the answer is no. They decided against participating in the plans to form what would become the 81st. Why exactly they did not do this, the regimental history does not tell us. And I can't help but think that there was some other motivations that we are yet to understand or that I've yet to find out. But lo and behold, none of the men decided to enlist as part of the plan. Now, a second plan was made, and the second plan was simply to start a new regiment fresh and recruit whoever they could from the area, and also invite the 48th to reconsider if they wanted to. And according to this regimental history, about 30 men first. Now, my question is, is our soldier picture here, was he one of those National Guard who ultimately decided to Well, I don't know. It's not a question graph of him. 
or any additional information. It's possible that he may have been one of those men. The fact that he's wearing his National Guard cartridge belt plate certainly suggests that he had a connection to the National Guard, whether it was the 48th or We don't know. It's a think about, and certainly the uniform tells a story. There's one other bit of detail on the image, actually it's the amount of the image that I want to mention. If you look closely in the lower right-hand corner, the print area overlaps a letter with a period. And here's a close-up. You can see a Y and a period. Now, my theory on this is that it stands for Brady. In other Brady images. So the period, and if you look really closely, you can see where the print area seems to be a bit darker. And it's about the length of five letters that would spell Brady. So that's what we have here, this potential image of a soldier uh, who was with the 48th National Guard and became part of the 81st. The 81st, by the way, went uh, down to Virginia, participated in the peninsula. I hope you enjoyed the episode and thank you so much for watching. Weeks from now for